Module 8, Recording Macros to Advanced Skills. So far we've learnt how to automate number crunching within Excel. That's all very well and good, but there are a variety of other tasks which people have to perform in Excel which are just as time consuming. Here I have three identical lists. The first is a master list of numbers. We have been instructed to delete all the negative numbers from the list, to mark the scores under 5 in red, and then to sort the scores in ascending order. We can do this manually within Excel. So if we go to the first cell minus 6, right click, go delete, shift cells up, that's the first task carried out. We can then mark the scores under 5 in red, and we can also sort them from the data menu. But so far we only know a very limited amount of Visual Basic code and would not have any idea how to tell Excel to mark scores in red. So at this stage we have a helpful little tool. If we go to the Tools menu, Macro on Excel 2003, we can record a new macro. If we select Record New Macro and click through OK, Excel will now record the code for any action we take. So let's try deleting a negative number. Let's mark a score in red. And then let's sort the list as the final step in the process. We have now recorded all our strokes and so we can go Tools, Macro, Stop Recording. Now we need to bring up Visual Basic Editor. When you record a new macro it's put in a standalone module which we can locate. In this case it's under Module 1 and there's the code for what we did. Below the recorded macro we're going to start writing our own subroutine called List Sorter. As normal we're going to define the header row and the column to be processed, so we'll call it list col in this case. You should be very comfortable with the code I've started to write. Now we need to work out how to delete cells which have negative values. So we can write the if statement if cells n list col is less than zero then and all we need to do is fill in the blank. We now refer to the macro we recorded earlier and identify the two lines which appear to deal with deleting a cell. Now Excel will record exactly what you do. So the first line here says range D7 select. That means that you selected cell D7 so Excel has recorded it. However we may not always want to process cell D7 so instead of range D7 we can replace it with our notation cells n, list col. We can then copy and paste the code into the relevant part of our new macro. When you record macros, Excel has a habit of treating the selection separately to the step where you actually process the data. This means if you ever see dot select followed by a selection dot, then you can just cut that out completely. This is the simplest way to derive code, so the code required to delete a cell is very simply dot delete after the cell's address. This shift Excel up line refers to the fact that when we delete the cell, we expect to delete it such that the cells below shift upwards. Given we had to specify which direction we would shift in when we deleted the cell, it is perfectly plausible that this bit of the code covers that shift upwards. Then we want to say if a cell is under 5, make it red. So we can use an else if statement here because it's either one or the other. What's the code for marking a cell in red? Well if we look here it says range d5.select with selection.interior.colorindex equals 3.pattern equals Excel solid. Now as far as I'm aware we made no changes to the cell's pattern therefore this line is likely to be superfluous. Where you have a with statement what it means is that all the code within the with statement should be added to the end of the code above. So we can actually get rid of the with statement to derive our code for marking a selected cell in red. Of course the selections then cancel out applying the rule we learned before and range D5 of course becomes cells n list col. Again the code isn't intuitive at all but when you see the code it does make sense that it could be changing a cell's colour. Finally we need to sort the whole range. 
Now we haven't learnt a way of referring to more than one cell at the moment at the same time. The method goes something like this. You write range, then you write the first cell's address with a row and column index. So in this case, the top row is row 1, or more accurately, header row, and the column is list col. The bottom row should be 100, as our loop went up to 100, again in list col. If we close brackets on the whole range, this is the area we want to sort. We can copy the code for sorting from our recorded macro, but when deriving code, you will always have to make some changes. It's very important to read through everything and see if you can understand what each line does. If you don't understand a line, try deleting it. Key 1 equals range D2. That seems to be saying you need to specify a range by which to sort within your range. And that range should be a single cell. So instead of D2, let's try specifying something in row 2, or more precisely just below the header, in our column. Order 1 equals ascending. We want to go from lowest to highest, so that sounds plausible. Header equals guess. Well, our data does have a header. So ideally, we don't want to be guessing whether it's got a header. So if we retype the last bit of the code with the colon followed by the equals, Excel will show us what other options are available. Excel yes sounds like it could be the one which gives us a header. Order custom, I have no idea what that does. Match case, again, no idea what that does. Orientation, not sure what that does. Data option 1, sort normal, no idea what that does. Let's try deleting all that code. This may seem an unnecessary step, but if you simply copy what you've recorded in a macro, you'll end up with hundreds of non-essential lines of code that you won't be able to explain to anyone else who may develop the sheet at a later date. That can make spreadsheets impossible to maintain and takes away from their elegance. So with absolutely no knowledge of the following commands, dot delete and dot interior dot color index or dot sort, we've managed to produce a macro which contains those functions. The important thing is to see whether it works, and this is always best done by stepping through the code line by line. So I'm going to press F8, which you can also do from the debug menu by going step into. So N is the row being processed, N is currently equal to 2. We know that cell F2, which will be cells N list call, is less than 5, so we would expect this command to be carried out on the cell. This command makes the cell go red, as intended. Nothing happens to the next cell, but then we reach minus 6 in row 4. We delete that cell, and now we realise that our code isn't quite right. If we go to next n, you can imagine n will increase from 4 to 5, so the next cell to be processed will be F5. But it should be F4, that's because when you delete a cell, you take that row out of the equation completely, so really you need an additional line that says n equals n minus 1 whenever you make a deletion. And you will have to drag the coding arrow back up to that line. It all gets rather tedious now because we know this code works. So we should skip towards the end where we have our sort function by putting a break on the left hand side. If we press play, we are now at the break point and we can see if the data sorts correctly. It looks like it's gone through absolutely perfectly, so we can just press F8 a couple more times to reach the end of the routine. Now we know the code works, there's absolutely no reason to retain the macro we recorded originally, so in the interest of tidiness, we will get rid of it. We've also developed our code in Module 1, which isn't a very informative name, so we can change the name to something like Mod List Sorter. Now anyone developing this spreadsheet will be able to find where you've written the code sorter list very simply just by looking in the project window. It's about time we looked at the sheet itself just to check that everything's gone through correctly and we can see that we've made a lot of cells red which we didn't intend to make red. We can also see that if we make a red cell equal to more than 5 such as 8 here and rerun the macro that the cell remains red that means we need to create an additional line of code which makes the cell go back to being a blank colour. This is easily done. We go Tools, Macro, Record New Macro, get rid of the colour, stop recording, 
and we look at the new code which says selection dot interior dot color index equals XL none. So we should add an additional else statement which says if a cell is greater than five then the interior index is equal to XL none. Once again we get rid of the macro we recorded we press play to run the macro and we don't even need to look at the sheet and as you can see the red colouring from that cell has now disappeared.